Hey guys, we've got some breaking news for you, so we wanted to get this video out as soon as possible, and it's big. Ford just announced that the new Bronco, wait for it Nathan, is going to unveil in the spring of 2020. Finally! Yes, finally, we've got some real Bronco news. And what we're going to talk about today are what we think are the top, well, it's, we're going to do 10, but it's actually 13 <laughs> things that Ford needs to do to compete with both the Wrangler and the new Defender. Yeah. So let's get right to it. Uh, number 10, it's gotta be affordable, Nathan. That's right, I mean, think about this. The Wrangler is a really expensive vehicle just to begin with. I mean, it's over 31 for like a base model. And then you go all the way to the Defender and that's starting in the 50s. So this vehicle needs to be more affordable, right? I agree. Uh, we're thinking it's got to be in the 30 to maybe 45k range, Tommy. No, I think it's going to be a lot more expensive than that. I'd like to see it more affordable, but we were talking earlier. You know, I could see you know a four door Bronco, and once again, we're talking about the big the big Bronco, not the little baby Bronco, the crossover, the right. off roady one. I think uh, one of those could go well into the 60s. Yeah, the baby Bronco is pretty much going to come out based on the platform of the new Escape. Right. Uh, that'll come out first. In fact, by the end of the year, we think it's going to be out. Mm -hmm. But we're talking here about the big boy Bronco, right. the one that goes back into the 60s. Yeah. Right. That one's, what we're talking about is based on a truck platform. It has a solid rear axle. It is built for off-road. And it's built directly as a competitor for the Wrangler and, to a lesser extent, to the Defender. Yeah, and speaking about the big boy Bronco, I think it's got to be big. I think it's actually got to be bigger than a Wrangler and probably bigger than the new Defender 90, at least in the four-door version. Well... You disagree? Uh, yeah, I don't think that they're going to go um, F-150 platform. I mean, the current rumors are it's going to be based on a Ranger. Nathan has seen the mules running around Colorado in person, yep. and you said they're pretty small. Yeah, they are. The, we saw the two-door. Now, there's going to be a two-door and a four-door from what we gather. And uh, from what Ford has announced through the UAW, that it will be on the same production line as the current Ranger. And we're expecting the same components to be shared. A different frame, a shorter frame. That we're hearing. So I'm expecting it to actually be, in some ways, a little tiny bit smaller, at least lengthwise, than the Wrangler. I'm not saying that that's what I want necessarily, but that's what I'm thinking it might be. So let's talk about performance. Uh, we think, uh, it, at least I think, it needs to have better performance than the Wrangler or the Defender. And mm. what I mean by that is uh, it probably has to have, and get this, hold your breath, the V8 Coyote. Yeah. <laughs> you like that? You think I'm crazy? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. need it. What do you think it's going to have? Uh, well, I think it's going to come standard with a 2.3 liter uh, EcoBoost four cylinder engine that's currently available inside the 2 Ranger. 3, not the 2.7. The 2.3 is, the, I think, the base engine. Yeah. And with the 10-speed automatic transmission, uh, rumor has it that there'll be a six-speed manual transmission option. We don't know. That's that's not confirmed. But that's what I think the base model will be. I don't. I don't really think it matters because <laughs> I mean the the 2008 Wrangler JK sold like a million units and it had a flaccid toaster strudel of an engine. So, <laughs> like it just it give it. It's gonna have the two three. It's not gonna have as much power. So a, a Defender with the the new straight six has 395 horsepower, and I just don't think they're going to target that. Uh, but 270, 310, same engine out of the Ranger, that's plenty. V8 Coyote's crazy. All right. Um, the other thing it has to be is a better daily driver than a Wrangler, because let's face it, we love Wranglers here, but you know that straight-up windshield, that straight-up seating position, it's even for big guys like me, it's very tight. I mean, it's got to have room, and it's mm. got to be comfortable. It's got to be a kind of vehicle you can drive not only off-road, but also take your family on vacation, and that means it's got to be comfortable. Once again, if it indeed it is based on the Ranger platform, it will be a very comfortable vehicle to drive, in my estimation, because we've had really good results with the Ranger as a daily driver. Independent front suspension, yeah. uh, very comfortable inside, a fairly comfortable interior, pretty good room. As far as we can tell, the soon-to-be Bronco will have a higher roof line, it looks like it will, and it'll be, I think, a more comfortable vehicle than the Wrangler. That's just, you know, a guesstimation, but I think it has to be that. I think you're right. Well, and going off of that, I mean, a lot of the off-road guys will say it has to have a front solid axle, and I don't think any of that really matters, because I think 9 out of 10 people that don't go out and buy a Wrangler don't even know what a front solid axle is, <laughs> you know? How about locking diffs and disconnectable sway yeah, bars? Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be cool, and I'd like to see, um, you know, what we're getting to next, like a, a Raptor version with locking diffs. 
But once again, I think for 9 out of 10 people, they just want something that looks like a 60s Bronco uh, that is actually fairly comfortable to drive every day. So the Defender is going to have a lot of horsepower. Yep. So we think to compete with the Defender, uh, we're going to need a Bronco Raptor. That'd be cool. Wouldn't that be cool? Be and that cool. one maybe would have the 2.7. Yeah, the 2.7 is a, a hell of a... It's a V6 twin turbocharged. 335 uh, yeah. horsepower, 380 pound-foot of torque. Yeah. That would be a very good start. Uh, to do a Bronco Raptor. Plus, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Raptor is becoming kind of its own brand. It's uh, been now around for, what, 10 years? Ish. Yeah. Ish. It's becoming iconic. So it would make sense for them to do that. And it would compete with the higher versions, the faster versions of the Defender. And the well, Rubicon. Yeah, right. that's right. And we also know that they have Raptor versions of other vehicles yeah. out there. So why not? All right. Yeah. Let's talk towing, guys. I think it needs to tow at least 5,000 pounds. That's really the Achilles heel of the current Wrangler. It tows only 3,500 pounds. Right. Yeah, so it's five, not happy about it either. 5,000. How many does the Defender tow? Well, Defender, I believe they said tows like seven or 8,000. I mean, it's way up there. Yeah. And obviously, the, the Jeep guys out there are going to be like, well, if you want to tow, just buy a Gladiator. But I don't think that someone cross shopping a, a Bronco is going to look at the Gladiator. They're going to be looking at a Wrangler, and they're going to see the Wrangler tows. Um, well, what? 3,500 pounds. Yeah, it's like four pillows. Yeah. And they're going to be like, I want to tow my boat with the Bronco. And that's what the, I agree. I think this is really important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe, you know, better would be 8,000. Well, that would be better. But I think realistically, 5,000 pounds is a good expectation. All right. Design wise, I think uh, it has to be masculine. It has to be boxy. It has to be rugged. It has to be kind of retro in a lot of ways. You know, the way that people imagine the Bronco, because let's face it, the, that first generation Bronco is iconic, right? You see it in all kinds of commercials. And we actually had one, it's tiny. Dude, so right, most, people, most people who have never like sat in the thing don't realize just how tiny it is. Yeah, it was a tiny But vehicle. it's gotta have that kind of, you know, two round lights, a grill. Uh, it's gotta look like the original Bronco. You're saying that uh, grill is it was, okay. Let's move on <laughs> from what he was talking about, though. I agree that it has to have a retro kind of um, heritage design, right? Yeah, and I think like you'll find uh, first year, four people are going to go crazy. They're going to be the ones buying the Bronco. Right. You're going to get some Jeep converts, but it's year two, three, four, five, and I think this is really what's going to sell the Bronco. All right, all right. Is a design. Department. All right, dude, you called me out on that. Here, let me explain about. Well, the you grill. just said grill. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Have a grill. No, no, Gotta have a grill. The Defender went with that kind of angry Jeep look, right? The slanty-eyed, it's got the kind of angry birds look. Uh, and classic off-roaders have always had a, just a standard up, up and down grill and two round lights giving it kind of a friendly face. And the Defender went away from that for some reason. Well, we should, with the Jeep, the, the, Broncos, the Broncos never had up, it's never had slots. Right, but, but I'm saying, it, it's, it, don't mess with that look. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, fair all right. enough. So it's got to have but a grill. There's more to it than that, guys, because you got to think about all the components that have to go into it in order to make it that. So, removable top. Yep, that's next on our list. Yeah, we're, we're hearing rumors of a um, removable hard top, uh, possibly doors that pop off. Yeah. Possibly oh. uh, some kind of sports bar like or the Wrangler has that pops off. Did you see the shower curtain? That, that forward is patented. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty cool shower curtain. Yeah. And there's a little... Uh, there's dip like an and awning and... that like can come out too. It's cool All right, stuff. let's talk about powertrains because this is important, right? Mm -hmm. um, the Br Ranger, um, the Wrangler, and uh, the Defender both come with diesels. Yeah. So does it have to have a diesel option? Um, and better yet... Does it have to have a hybrid or an electric version? Well, you said the Ranger. No, the Wrangler. Oh, Wrangler. I corrected okay. myself. Oh, okay. Um, mm, that's I, a really I good question. I, I think so. I think eventually. so. I think there's got to be no, some. I don't think so. Down the line, I think so. No, I don't think so because Defender hasn't announced a diesel for the U.S. And I just, I think it's kind of old tech. I mean, it's cool tech, so I don't think a diesel is in the question. But I do think that with the Mach-E coming... You know, which we know is coming soon yeah. with uh, a full electric powertrain. Some of that technology incorporated into a Bronco would be really cool. Yeah, that's a good point. But on top of that, guys, think about it. We have the brand new uh, Ford uh, exp uh, excursion expedition. Expedition, right? So many X's. Yeah. <laughs> We have one of those vehicles. Anyway, the point is, is that um, a lot of the technology that they're currently baking up for everything from the Escape all the way up to the Expedition, everything in between, they're doing hybrid powertrains. We know that because it's coming out. And that is a front engine rear drive setup that they're doing right now. And that could possibly go in there. 
We'll see. We'll see. All right, let's keep going. How about after uh, market support? In other words, uh, Ford performance parts accessories, right? That has to happen. One of the reasons mm -hmm. that people buy Jeeps is because you can make it your own. So I think you're right. I think they have to have all the goodies that you could put on uh, from snorkels, lifts, to, uh, bigger snorkels, wheels and tires, the, the push bars, you, you name it. Oh, it's yeah. it's got to be there. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. No, I think you're right. That's um, going to be huge. And I think it's got to be uh, distinctive from other Fords. So you said earlier in this video that it's going to be based on a Ranger platform. We don't know that. That's, that's, that's speculation. That's rumor. But we know it's being built. Well, actually, no. It's, it's, it's been confirmed that it's being built with Ranger components. They said so. We don't know it's built the, on that you, platform, though. We don't UAW know. UAW said, okay. Let's continue on. No, because my point is, I don't think that it should share components with other Ford vehicles. I think it's going to hurt it. I think if it if it's a rebranded Explorer or if it's a rebranded uh, uh, Ranger, then people like us, the automotive journalists, are going to call that what it is. And people are like, well, why don't I just get the Ranger? Why don't I want to get the Bronco, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I'd like to see it have its own platform, be distinctive, and be its own product line as opposed to taking something that, that already exists and because this is what they did with the Ranger, right? They took a European Ranger and they put some different bumpers on it uh, and called it done, right? And I don't want to see that with the Bronco. I think well, the Bronco to compete in this very... It's going to happen. We already, I mean, we know that it's a Ranger that's been shrunk down a little bit and it's going to be on the same production line. They announced it. I don't, I don't really think it matters what it's based on, um, as long as it looks cool and uh, has big tires. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, I, I don't think the vast majority of people, even who buy Jeeps, care that it's, it's got a body of frame construction. There's a very small percentage of us journalists that do really care um, and enthusiasts, but I think for most people, as long as it's got really big tires and looks like it can go off-road, that's what matters. And I'm pretty sure every body panel will be unique. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. All right, and then let's talk about the last bit, which is uh, marketing, how they sell it, right? And I'm afraid it's going to be sold the traditional way that a lot of vehicles are sold in America, and that is dealers will mark the hell up out of it. Oh, right? they're going to absolutely torture yeah. uh, customers. Right. Yeah. And, and I think it would be great if it was sold like Tesla does, where you go online, you pick a package that you want, and this is really what the Defender's already doing. You configure it, you show up at the dealership, and the only experience you have is when you turn over a, a check and they give you the vehicle. That would be nice in a, in a perfect world. Unfortunately, I, I, it's dealerships exist, and a lot of them do. And there's millions and billions of dollars to be made from markups and from really, you know, unscrupulous well, well, people and, doing that. And then here's the problem, right? Me and you have a real good sense of what the Bronco used to be, right? Mm -hmm. We have all this history with We it. owned one. Right, and we, and, and we have the O.J. Simpson thing, right? Oh, yeah. Whereas for you, it's... You know, it's been out of the market for over 20 years now. So it's a big gap. It's a big gap. And yeah. so it's something very different. And I think if, if it goes down that same line where you're excited about it and then you go to the dealership and there's some dealer saying, hey, here's a $20,000 market adjustment, it's going to turn a lot of people off and you're going to go sell a lot more Defenders and Wranglers. I agree with you 100% uh, that the dealerships can kill this car. So the number one most important thing that's going to determine whether or not this Bronco is successful is timing. So here at TFL, we came up with this, and this is important. Are you listening forward? As long as the Bronco hits dealerships by at least mid, maybe late 2018, it's going to be a massive success. It's going to be huge. <laughs> it's a good, but Tommy has a good point, though. It has been stretched out for years, and they've taken too long to bring it to production. Yeah, I mean, it's got to, you know, so they unveil it, let's say New York, right? That's a possibility okay. spring. Yeah. Or some special event for it in the spring. Oh. It's got to hit the dealerships by the fall of next year at the latest. Yeah. I think if, if they stretch it out for another year, it's just going to be too little too late. I mean, and I think they're hurting themselves because it's been such a long wait now, the enthusiast expectations are going to be so incredibly high. You know, they're going to just be getting higher and higher and rumors are going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And unless it's Bigfoot, people are going to be bummed out if they wait any longer, you know? So let's just recap. So what we know is that the baby Bronco is most likely coming out in the next month or so, which is based on probably an escape platform. No, it's, right. it's announced. Yep. Yeah. And then um, after that, in the spring at some point, the real big boy Bronco is coming out. Right. Uh, might be in New York, might be at a separate event. Um, so we're going to have two Broncos to review next year. That's I am excited exciting. for both. Yeah. I am excited for both vehicles. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think it'll be great for Defender and great for Wrangler because competition always makes the breed yeah, better. It forces everybody to yeah. up their game. And cheaper. And cheaper. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, good. Well, guys, thanks for watching. This has been a really quick, impromptu video. We want to get the news out there as soon as possible. And we'd love to get your comments. What do you think? What's the most important factor that...
the new Bronco has to have to compete with the Wrangler and the Defender. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Go back to TFLCar and TFLTruck.com for the latest and greatest in Ford Bronco news. See you guys next time. Ciao. Bye.